Hey, Fiona, what the heck is your problem, huh? Why the heck were you out walking with our professor? What business do you have talking with him, huh? Who do you think you are? Professor? Tia, I'm sorry, but I have no idea who you're talking about. I am talking about Professor Gray. I saw you two go all the way to your house and he walked you in. So what was up with that? Hold on a second. I didn't know that you knew Jonathan. He's actually my fiance, but where did you two meet? Hold on a second. You're telling me that the two of you are going to be getting married? Yeah, of course. But as you know, I still live with my parents, so... The last time he came over was to meet them for the first time. I had no idea that you and John actually already knew each other though, but I guess you do because you already knew he's a professor. You've got to be kidding me. I, I really just can't believe what I'm hearing. You're telling me Professor Gray is really going to be getting married? And to you of all people? Hey, come on, what kind of way is that to talk about me getting married? I bet you're pretty shocked though, huh? I mean, we've known each other for so long, but you know, you haven't even said congratulations once to me about this. Oh, give me a break. You really think that I would ever congratulate you for this? There is no way that I can believe what you're trying to tell me. And the reason for that is because I'm going to be the one to marry Jonathan, not you. So let me have him. I will make him mine. Wait, what? What are you talking about? I am talking about Professor Gray. He should be engaged to me, not you. So hand him over. Why would he even want to marry someone like you in the first place? <sighs> this doesn't make any sense to me. How could you do this? I'm sorry, Tia, but I really have no idea what you're talking about at all right now. Are you actually saying that you and John are engaged? I don't have to give you my life story. You just need to hand him over to me. I refuse to let you get away with marrying him. I have always loved Professor Gray, and I'm the only woman good enough to be his wife. Got it? So just get away from him and give him to me. Jonathan, you have got some serious explaining to do. I am I'm serious. What the heck is going on here? Oh, Fiona, what's going on? Is everything okay? Is this about something that happened when I was at your place today? Is everything okay? That is not what I'm talking about, and you should know that. My parents were over the moon to meet you. But the thing is that I just got some very upsetting messages from an old friend of mine. You got some upsetting messages? Were they about me? Which friend is it? What are you talking about? It's a friend I've known since we went to school together. Her name is Tia, and I think that you might know her. In fact, she was telling me how you were her fiancé, not mine. Wait, what? Someone actually said that to you? Is she being serious? I don't know. I mean, she knew who you were, so I'm just confused and want to know what's going on here. How do you two know each other? What is this all about? Fiona, I'm really sorry, but I'm pretty confused here. I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. I do know a girl named Tia, but if you're telling me that she's been your friend this whole time, that's pretty surprising to me. Well, you should know that she kept calling you Professor Gray and not by your name. So did you ever have a student named Tia or something like that? I know she was taking college classes as early as when we were back in high school. Oh, really? So then she might have actually been at the college for longer than I expected. Yeah, we were together through high school, but then we ended up going to different places for college. But anyways, she was always pretty sharp and the school had a program to send students to college class if they were advanced enough. I see. Well. Okay, so, we'd be thinking of a student I might have had back when you were just finishing high school. I don't know, I was teaching a lot of classes back then to be able to make ends meet. I just really am not sure I'd be able to remember a specific one. 
But Tia was saying that you and her were engaged. Surely you should be able to narrow it down from that, right? I mean, did you ever go out with a former student or something like that? Of course not. You know that I'd never ever do that. I'm not that kind of person at all. I might have gotten chocolate from some students on Valentine's Day or something like that, but you know the high standards that I hold myself to, and I would never do something like what you're implying. Yeah, I, I didn't think that you really had it in you to do something like that. I just wanted to see how you'd react. Well, if that was supposed to be a joke, then it wasn't very funny. Teachers have a duty to help educate their students, but but they shouldn't take advantage of the positions they're in to be in inappropriate relations with them. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I wasn't even serious when I suggested it. It's just that it's what Tia was saying to me. Well, okay. Next time I go into the office, I'll look through my records, see if I can't find someone with that name. But I guess I'll be going back a while. I really am sorry to ask you to do all of that, but it would be a huge help to me if you did. I get that this is probably just nothing, but I just don't think I'm going to feel okay until I understand what's going on. Well, don't worry. I get why you'd be worried about someone saying something like this, and if it's going to put your mind at ease, then I don't mind doing this at all. So I'll check tomorrow and let you know what I find. If I find anything at all, that is. I knew it. I knew that Professor Gray liked me more than he liked you, and that's why we're going to be getting married. Again with this, what are you talking about this time, Tia? I'm just saying that after I talked to you, I got a message from the professor. I told him how unfair he was being marrying another girl when I like him so much. I told him all about how I've been head over heels for him ever since I met him in high school. And he told me that he felt the same and that's why we're going to be getting married. I don't know what you're talking about, but I really think there has to be some kind of mistake here. Jonathan would never say something like that. I get why you wouldn't want to believe what I'm telling you, but I'm only being honest. Nothing is going to change the fact that Professor Gray proposed to me. I guess you must be in absolute shock right now, right? Should I call an ambulance? Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary. But I am curious why you have his number in the first place. Oh, come on. You do know that I was a former student of his, right? So of course I would have his phone number. It's not that hard to find. And so you're telling me that you and John were talking and that he proposed to you? That's right. Uh, to be honest, I reached out to him, not the other way around, but he still proposed. Yeah, somehow I really don't think that's how things went. He didn't propose to you, and you two aren't getting married. You really need to snap out of this. I guess it's hard to digest for you, but there's no point in lying to yourself. Professor Gray and I have known each other ever since I was in high school, and I know he's liked me ever since then. Why else would we be getting married? I think it was probably the other way around. I think that you liked him ever since you were in high school. But I really don't think that you've ever stopped once to think about how all of this might be making John feel. You don't know what you're talking about. Sure, it's been some time since we last saw each other, but he was my first love and I told him as much when I was his student. He told me that he appreciated my feelings, but that it would be inappropriate for a student and teacher to be in a relationship. So don't you get it? That was his way of telling me to come and find him when I was more grown up. And now, ten years have passed, and I am finally ready to marry him. When I saw you with Professor Gray, I knew that it was fate using you to bring us closer together. You really think that fate wants you to steal my fiancé from me? Well, of course. Haven't you ever watched a romance movie? There is always some kind of messy love triangle. But the mysterious girl from the past always gets the guy. 
Besides, I'm only doing what Professor Gray told me to do. I'm coming back to find him now that I'm no longer his student. This is finally our chance to be together. And that's why I told you that he and I were already engaged to be married. I didn't hear you once tell me how he proposed to you. You just jumped to that conclusion all by yourself. Come on, think about it. Or maybe you're just blinded by jealousy and can't see the point I'm trying to make. What point? You haven't demonstrated or proven anything. Now, now, there's no need to get so upset. Of course, I can't really blame you. After all, you've already introduced him to your parents and everything. I bet you never in a million years thought that I'd be the one to steal him from you. But I'm sorry. It's like I said, I'm only doing what he told me to do. He never told you to stalk him and try to marry him in 10 years' time. You know, this really is just getting sad. I had hoped that you'd finally snap out of this and face up to reality. The fact is that we're fated to be together, and now it's finally all coming to fruition. I am so sorry to steal him from you so close to getting married, though. Well, you should know that I'm already with John on our honeymoon right now. Wait, what? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the fact that you don't know what you're talking about in the slightest. But you've really upset me with all of these messages, and you've basically ruined this honeymoon. But, wait, you two are on a honeymoon? Uh, doesn't that mean that you two are already married then? That's right. We got married last week, if you must know, and we just left for our honeymoon today. Hold on a second, how could this happen? What do you mean you two married last week? I mean just that. We introduced each other to our families, and then we realized there wasn't really any point in waiting any longer. So we went to the courthouse, and we had our wedding officiated last week. We've both already agreed that we're not really interested in a big wedding ceremony. So instead, we've just put all that money towards our honeymoon instead. So then, you two really left to go and be on your honeymoon yesterday? And you're telling me that you're really with Professor Gray right now? Well, I wouldn't call him Professor Gray, but yes, if you must know. I am on my honeymoon with my husband, understand? We both happen to have time off this week, and there were some good deals for tickets online, so we're spending the next weeks traveling all over Europe. This can't be happening. I refuse to believe it. You've got to be lying to me. Professor Gray was supposed to marry me, not you. You two can't be on your honeymoon. That's supposed to be my honeymoon. He's supposed to be my husband. What is going on here? I've told you what's going on, but you refuse to listen to what I have to say. But he's literally sitting here next to me reading these messages, and he said that he never got any messages from you. I really think that you need to go and get some professional help if you've been making this all up this whole time. I mean, you can't even tell the difference between reality and your insane fantasies. I'm not crazy, and they aren't fantasies. Professor Gray and I were supposed to be getting married. You're the one ruining everything. He proposed to me. We were meant to be together. Why are you doing this to me? I found his number, and I reached out to him. Are you telling me that I wasn't even talking to the right person? I'm sorry, Tia, but... I think the number you got for me was just a number at the university I work at. You never had my personal cell phone number to begin with. Wait a second. Is this... Are you... Professor Gray? That's right. It's me. I believe you took some classes of mine through the advanced studies program at your high school. Oh my gosh! It's been so long! We're finally getting to talk! Yeah, I actually forgotten all about you, but after Fiona told me about you, I went through my old records and pulled your file. I only remembered you because you were one of the girls who gave me chocolate on Valentine's Day. And I did remember that you cornered me one day and confessed the feelings that you had for me. 
so you do remember. That's right. I told you all about how much I liked you, but you told me that we'd have to wait to be together. But now I'm all grown up and ready to be with you. Even though I might have dated some people in between now and then, I want you to know that I never forgot about you. It's so great to finally hear back from you. Can you please correct Fiona about all of this? You have to tell her that you proposed to me. Tia, please. I just told you that you didn't even have my personal phone number. You only had a work number. None of your messages were even getting to me. They were connecting to a phone in the office. But, I mean, even if that's true, I still should have been calling you at your work, right? And you did actually propose to me, right? Well, I've actually been promoted, so I don't even teach anymore. I work more for the administrative side of the school. So I don't even use the kind of phone that you're trying to contact me on in the first place. But then, all the messages I was sending... I really have no idea whose actual number you were given, but... I'd imagine if you were texting with anyone, it'd be another teacher. Hold on a second. You mean to tell me that this whole time I wasn't even actually talking to you? So then, when you said that you remembered me, and you proposed to me... I thought I was talking to you, but you're telling me that I wasn't talking to you at all? Then who the heck was I talking to? Hmm. I wonder if it's the new professor who we hired recently. Now that I think about it, he is in the office I used to have. And there have been some concerning rumors about how close he's been getting to students lately. So, I guess there is a chance that he might have been pretending to be me this whole time, if he thought it would get him closer to a woman. So thank you very much for sharing all of this information with me. This should serve as enough evidence to finally get rid of him. But, wait, what about me? You're telling me that this teacher lied to me? I was never even talking to you in the first place? Well, that does appear to be the long and short of it. Really, so, I do apologize for my staff. I'll be sure to present him with this new evidence as soon as I'm back at school from my honeymoon with Fiona. But we'll make sure that he is dealt with appropriately, and if possible, we'll seek to have him fired. No, that's not what I wanted to hear. That isn't going to be enough. I don't want any kind of apology from you. I want you to marry me. Please, you have to. I'm begging you. Tia, please, just stop this. We were never even talking, and I'd forgotten all about you. Well, fine. If my message wasn't able to get to you the first time, then let me tell you again how much I love you. I loved you when I was your student, and I still love you now. Nothing has changed about those feelings that I have for you, so please don't leave me. Tia, you seem to think that I was just waiting for you to grow up. Is that right? Of course, that's what you told me. You told me that teachers and students shouldn't date, but I knew that you meant you just wanted me to be older. But now I am. I'm grown up and I am ready to marry you just like you said. Well, I guess I can see how you might have been able to misconstrue those words, but the fact of the matter is that I never had any feelings for you. I didn't want to be mean and shut you down or turn you away, but I realize now that I should have been clearer with my language. So let me take this opportunity to say that I don't like you, I have no romantic feelings for you, and I most certainly don't want to marry you. Now, I would greatly appreciate it if you could leave my wife alone and quit bothering her over what is nothing more than a miscommunication. So you don't like me? And you don't want to marry me? That's right. And to be honest, I don't think it's healthy for you to be so obsessed with a high school crush. Especially one that you had on your teacher. In fact, do you remember all the trouble that you gave me when you were my student? What do you mean? What trouble did I cause you? Well, there were a lot of rumors that ended up flying around the school about me. They were saying that I was having inappropriate 
relationships with the students. When I finally managed to figure out the source of them all, it all had to do with the way that you would talk about me to other students. You put me in serious hot water with the administration. I had to work hard to prove that I had nothing to do at all with what you were saying. But I just... I never meant to do that to you. Well, you did. So, I hope you can realize that you made things quite difficult, not only for Fiona, but for me as well. So please, before this gets any worse, can you just leave us alone and forget all about this silly crush? Anyways, we're going back to enjoying our honeymoon. Have a nice life, Tia. After that, Tia finally left us alone in peace to enjoy the rest of our honeymoon. When John got back, he talked to the problematic professor and he confessed to messaging Tia because he thought she was cute. He was fired shortly afterwards. Then John and I went to Tia's parents' house and told them all about what Tia had been doing to us. Her parents were furious and told her never to bother us again. I heard that afterwards, Tia ended up packing all her belongings and moving far, far away. We never heard from her again. Are you crying at home, sis? Pick up the phone. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't talk right now. Okay, I'll just message you. You broke up with your fiancé, right? Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I feel you. I don't know why this happened. We had just set the date for the wedding. We were having so much fun talking about where we wanted to go on our honeymoon. Oh, he told me he found someone he liked. I can't believe he just told me that. I never thought this would happen. Hey, you know, there's something I have to tell you. Don't be mad, okay? What is it? That someone is me. What? You are? The other day, your fiancé confessed his feelings for me. What? I felt bad for you, but he was so passionate about me, so I just said yes. I'm really sorry. Wait a minute. Did you say okay? Even though he's my fiancé? What kind of nerve do you have? Because when he confessed to me, you and him were already over. How can you marry a man who confesses to me? So it won't change whether I say yes or not, right? It does change. What about my feelings? Don't you think I would be hurt even more? Well, I feel sorry for you, but I already said okay. If you really felt bad, you would have said no when he reached out to you, wouldn't you? What you are doing is plundering. But he was the one who approached me, you know? And I just said okay. You got to be kidding me. That's just a bunch of nonsense. I'm sorry. I'm just prettier than you. What? I've always been the one who people have loved, haven't I? You know, because you're so plain. If I compare you to me, I think I'm better than you. That's enough. Do you think you can justify it like that? But isn't that how it's always been? The people you like, sis, they always end up liking me. But I didn't think that even your soon-to-be fiancé would fall for me. You planned for that to happen, didn't you? You charmed him and seduced him. That's how you stole my fiancé. Well, it's about to go wrong at this point. It means the love between you and your fiancé wasn't true love. It's probably a good thing you found out about it before you got married. How can it be good? You're always like that, aren't you? You take from me everything important to me. What the hell do you think you're doing? I'm not doing it on purpose. It just happens all around me. It's called force majeure. How can you say that? I know you feel like you have to take something that belongs to me. You can't let me be happy. You are so greedy. Calm down, sis. Being mad at me won't bring him back. You better change your mind and move on. Are you going to marry him? Well, he even proposed to me but I'm not sure what to do. I'd feel sorry for you if I get married with your ex, wouldn't I? No, I don't mind. If you want to, why don't you get married? Weary? I wouldn't congratulate you. 
I won't even attend the wedding. But if you want to get married, be my guest. It's not my problem anymore. Oh, you're not coming to the wedding? I will feel sad. You just want to show off. How can I congratulate you on that? I'm sure I'll never forgive you for it. Do you hate me? Even though we're the only sisters in the world? Ever since I was a child, you have taken so many things from me. So I don't want to be messed around from now on. I no longer care about you. I will not contact you. And I don't want to see you anymore. That's terrible. Don't be so cold. I really want to abuse you like a bitch. I'm trying to be nice to you. Don't get involved with me anymore. I'm sorry I left everything to you, including mom's funeral and the government procedures. I'm glad you're back, sis. I see you unblocked my WhatsApp too. I guess that means we've made up by now, right? It's only temporary. If we don't keep in touch, the funeral and other procedures won't go smoothly. Let's make up. I mean, you really left everything to me, didn't you? Mom has always been more loving to you than me. But you didn't take care of her after she passed away. You're an ungrateful child. I don't know anything complicated. Since you're a tax accountant, you're good at that sort of thing. So why not? I'm glad you're strong in paperwork and stuff like that. You don't have to be a tax accountant to do it. You just don't want to do it. You're so selfish. But you're the ungrateful one, aren't you, sis? I heard you lost in touch, not only with me, but also with mom. Mom was on your side. So? Mom told me a year after my engagement was called off to forgive you. That's when I realized she was always on your side. She doesn't care how much I have been hurt, so I decided to keep my distance. But that was five years ago. Can't you just forgive me now? I told you I would never forgive you. I can't believe that the perpetrator is asking the victim to forgive. This, you really hate me. I'm sad. Go ahead and be sad. I don't care what you think. You're talking so coldly to me again. I was sad when mom passed away. But I was happy to see my sister again. I just came back with no choice. I didn't want to see you. You know, I heard about you at the funeral. Seems you're getting married. Congratulations. Your congratulations don't make me happy. I thought you were still holding on to that thing. But you found a new love. I'm glad you've moved on. How can you say that? Your new fiancé came with you. I really didn't want to bring him, but he's a serious guy. He couldn't even greet my parents about our marriage, so he wanted to at least attend the funeral. He was a cute guy, wasn't he? I've been thinking about it for a long time. At least you have good taste in guys. Don't mess with him. Well, I told him about what you did to me five years ago. He knows who Ashley really is, and I don't think he's going to go for you. I doubt that. Men are a lot more stupid than you think. Even if they know a beautiful flower is poisonous, they'll still try to get close to it. He's not like that. He's not that kind of guy. Besides, you have that guy you stole from me five years ago. What? I broke up with him a long time ago. No way. It was about six months after you lost contact with me. I dumped him. I thought he was nice when we started going out. He wasn't what I imagined. I kind of lost interest. You broke up my engagement. When I thought about it, I didn't even like his face that much. But I really like your current boyfriend. You're not beautiful, but somehow you are very attractive to men. I knew I shouldn't have gone to the funeral. I shouldn't have unblocked you. Don't ever get involved with me again. So you're going to block me again? But then you won't be able to see what I do. Are you still going to do something again? Not right now. I'm just happy that I can talk to you again. Sorry sis. I might break up your engagement again. What did you do to him? You didn't notice? I know, right? 
If you had noticed, you would have said something. What are you talking about? Your fiancé and I were getting to know each other, secretly. We've actually dated many times. He seems to prefer me after all. You, again? How did you get close to him? I went to his house and met him. How did you know where he lived? I had a quick chat with him at the funeral. While you were busy with morning duties, I asked him where he worked at that time. Once I know where he works, it's easy to find out where he lives. Don't tell me you follow him from his office. I was walking around his house and bumped into him. Then, maybe because you weren't around, he was more friendly than at the funeral. We slept together that same day. How could that be a coincidence? Why do you try so hard to take him from me? Why can't you just leave me alone? It can't be helped. I fell in love with him at first sight. How dare you? You just want to take away my love. When you're satisfied with what you've taken from me, you dump him right away. This time, I'll be responsible until the end. After all, he promised to marry me. That's a lie. I'm not lying. Yesterday, he said he'd marry me. He would never betray me. He's not like any man I've ever met. I'm sorry. He's the kind of man who would befriend me without telling you. I wonder if my charms will seduce men. Beauty is guilty, isn't it? Damn you. What are you talking about? I'm a pretty little sister, aren't I? I should have ignored mom's funeral. I wish I've never bothered with you. Don't be so sad. If I ever get tired of him, then I'll give him back to you. Or you can find a new handsome guy for me. Are you crying, sis? I feel like we had a similar conversation five years ago. I'm not crying. That's great. You've grown stronger in five years. You never change, do you? You're always doing the same thing over and over again. And you're happy about it. So it's really bad. I feel I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry I broke up your marriage again. I didn't mean to. Forgive me. You don't believe that. Liar. I'm not lying. I'm really sorry. I'm so sorry I was born pretty. That's okay. That man is not my fiancé. So why don't you just go ahead and get married, if you can. What are you talking about? Are you going crazy from shock? I was going crazy when I thought he betrayed me. But he wasn't. Ashley, you got the wrong guy. He must be your fiancé. I saw him coming out of his home. That guy is my fiancé's twin brother. It just happened that he was staying at my fiancé's house that day. They're identical twins, so I guess you've got confused. Don't lie to me. Your fiancé's name is Jamie, right? I call him Jamie. If I've mistaken him for someone else, he would have pointed out to me. That's the thing. His brother is a total jerk. I'm sure he noticed your mistake right away. He must have pretended to be my fiancé. Why would he do that? Because you had a pretty face. My fiancé said his brother-in-law has always been like that. He pretended to be his brother and had his way with his girlfriends. He's a good match for you. No way! It can't be! You're trying to make me give up by saying that, aren't you? I confirmed with my fiancé what you had told me. But he doesn't remember seeing you since the funeral. So we questioned him because we thought it was him. Then he admitted everything. What? So it's true? He's not your boyfriend? My brother-in-law is a womanizer. He and his wife fought a lot. The reason he stayed in my fiancé's house was that he ran away from home after a fight with his wife. His wife? What? Is he married? Yes. Also, she's pregnant. He's a married man? And he's not even your fiancé himself? He tricked me. And only satisfied his desires? I'm sure he had a lot of frustration. Then some stupid woman showed up and he decided to use you for his own convenience. What's that? What do you mean, stupid woman? I'm talking about you. You're the one who's stupid. Oh, come on. Don't be so mad. That's because you make fun of me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But I've always thought you were an idiot. What? Because you are, aren't you? You may think you're talking down to me, 
You know, you're happy with my used ones every time. It was annoying, but thanks to you, I can judge a bad man. I'm just thankful that I finally met a nice guy. What are you talking about? Who do you think you are, sister? Maybe you feel good about taking what belongs to me. But in the end, that's the only kind of person who will take you. You were just being used. Thanks to you, I found someone I care about and I'm grateful. I'm not being taken advantage of. I'm going to take your current fiancé away from you soon. It's too late for you to regret upsetting me. Don't worry about it. We'll never see you again. What? He and I are both sick and tired of our siblings being jerks. So since we are getting married, I thought it would be a good opportunity to move far away. Even if that's the case, I will find you. If you can find us, go ahead. If you have time for that, you should really start worrying about your future. It's none of your business. Really? But I am so worried. You try to take something that belongs to me. Like being tricked into a relationship with a married man without knowing it. You're not that smart, you know that? Who would really care for someone like that? Shut up! Unlike you, I'm pretty. Everyone loves me. I hope you meet someone nice while you're still pretty. I hope you find someone who will love you for who you really are. At least my guy can't take someone who would hurt her own sister, no matter how pretty she is, apparently. We'll forget about you and be happy. I'm so sorry. I couldn't give you my used one anymore. After that, I moved in with him as I declared and we got married. We're living a peaceful, newlywed life in a place where I don't have to deal with my sister. My husband takes good care of me and I'm so happy to have finally found someone like him. My sister, on the other hand, has been in a lot of trouble since then. She was so angry that I made fun of her. She started to search for a partner on a dating app, saying that she would marry a better man than me. There, she met a good-looking, high-spec man, but he was just a scammer, and my sister ended up with a lot of theft. She must have been in a hurry and could not see what kind of man he was. My sister has been taking things from others, but now she has become the one being taken from herself. I will never see her again, but I will be happy on my own. It will be the best way to get back at my sister.